Hey, good morning. It's 8.58 a.m. It is December 16th, Saturday morning. Happy Saturday, everyone. For you guys who are off this weekend, I hope you have a very peaceful, zen-like weekend. Enjoy yourself. Separate, step away from all the negativity that you have to deal with during the week, and hopefully you'll be able to find some relaxation with your family, relaxation and enjoyment. So this is a good time to pick up your hobbies, do things that you like to do, um, get to be yourself, <laughs> you know, for those two days. I mean, I mean, really take advantage of that time for your own well-being, right? Anyway, so um, last night I was like really kind of getting antsy because, you know, I want my life to move on from, like I want to move on from the trauma that I experienced. I felt like I dealt with a lot, you know, the fake job interviews. I would get phone calls, people hanging up, people being, you know, belligerent, rude in the workplace. And having this weird interaction with people that I used to know and being cut off, you know, like I was some sort of dirty something, you know, whatever. The whole thing was extremely traumatizing. You know, losing my mom, having the, on, and when we were having, the last time I spoke to my mother, um, I told her I wasn't going to see her again because she, yeah, she was playing dumb to this horrible scheme that she was, she participated in the experiment obviously she was getting instructions from these people to be quiet about something and it even though my relationship was rocky with my mother I didn't get a chance to at least you know I'm sorry that my relationship ended with my mother on such a sour note okay this whole thing just had me traumatized and shocked and weirded out and completely uncomfortable, nerve wracking um, anxiety for the entire time. Okay. I mean, I've, I've always been stuck, but we all know that there's a starting point of where it intensified. Like right after leaving that farmer's place, then it was just one fucking nightmare after another. Okay. And it became obvious that there's a secret that's going on about me. And apparently, the secret is is that I'm Prince Alamehu. And, um, Alamehu. <laughs> Not okay. And I, I want to just talk about pronunciation really quick. Now, I do a lot of reading, okay? But, and obviously, I, because I think outside the box, I read a lot of books that might, um, reference things in different cultures. And I'll see the pronunciation, I mean, I'll see it written. And I try my best to pronunciate, pronounce it, right? The problem is, is that I don't have, I'm not around people of that culture to where they can reinforce it. Like if I had a friend who spoke, spoke like maybe, um, like an Arabic type language, right? And I'm trying to pronounce it. She would say, Maria, no, this is how you pronounce it. And then I'd be like, oh, okay. And then I would get used to, to it because it would be like incorporated in conversations and stuff. Right. And then there's times where, you know, I, I'm like, how do you pronounce this correctly, right? Because, like, maybe an E-H sounds like E eh in English, and it might have a completely different pronunciation in, like, maybe maybe another, another language, right? So I'll, like, look it up on YouTube, and there's times where, okay, yeah, that's easy. I get it. I can say it. Like, there was this one um, Mexican deity that I was talking about in, like, the gods video that I made. And at first I was like, okay, I get it. I can do this, right? And then when I started recording the video, I'm like, it actually, I made the name sound more Polish than it was actually, um, like, in Spanish. Like it should, like it should sound. I'm like, man, I'm just really not good at this, right? But I will get better, okay? I, I'm very, I'm very much aware of every fucking flaw that I do. <laughs> I pick myself apart like you just don't even know. But, you know, that's why it's really cool when you have people who, who are different around you because you can learn from them, you know. And unfortunately, I don't have any social interaction. So I'm kind of like limited to looking up pronunciations on YouTube and then hoping, hopefully, hoping that when I'm recording the video, I remember how to pronounce it correctly. 
I don't have enough, like I said, feedback and reinforcement of the word or whatever to really get it right. Anyway, hopefully that'll change in the future. But I was upset yesterday about, you know, the issue of the Prince Alamlehu, and I was doing a lot of mental downloads. And I was getting, I've been getting this a lot, and I would say in the last three or four days, that a lot of people really want this whole Prince Alamlehu um um, they want it out in the open. They want it discussed. They want it like, you know, like coverage on it. And, um, and I, I thought about this possibility of it being out in the open. And I guess here's my, my, my reason for getting it out in the open, because I believe this whole covert program creates a toxicity that can do, that literally implodes in on a family house structure and relationships and everything else okay now i know my my relationship with my mother was rocky but if there was an open dialogue and exchange if this wasn't this i have a secret a very big secret that i'm keeping from you and i'm keeping it from you and it's that's what tore us apart knowing that my mother knew this knowing that she was playing dumb and the reason why she was playing dumb and it only protects these people who in my mind who initiated the, it, the whole targeting thing. I'm sorry, you can say what you want to, but these people to me are nothing but evil. It only benefited these wicked people. Okay, it destroyed my relationship. I I don't, I know my mom kind of was freaked out by me a lot, okay? And I forgive her for that. That I cannot hold a grudge against something that's human. You know what I mean? Not my my mother already had like a little bit of a weird thing about psychic powers and stuff like that from her family. Okay, but she was able to move and marry a, a man to get away from that family if that's what her choice was. And now there's another person who's got this issue ten times more than the, her family member. And you know it freaks her out, and I I understand that. I'm, I really try to be just and fair in my thinking, okay? And I forgive my mom, especially after finding out that I am Prince Alamelehu. Um, but all of this, this keeping it a secret like this, um, and, I, and I know everybody that knew me um, in the past and in the present, knows that I am, um, knew that I was a clone. Everybody knew that I was a clone. Like it was kind of like public, but top secret information, which made no sense. Okay. Um, that's how these people, they don't think, I guess, whatever. But anyway, people knew that I was a clone. Okay. And, um, and of course I didn't, you know, that's the joke, right? Ha ha. Um, and, you know, I, I don't ever discuss this issue, like, with my own child. I've never brought it up to him. Like, I, I've never, since finding out that I was prince, <laughs> the prince, I've never said, hey, you know, son, guess who I, I never said it. Because I figured this is all part of this big hush-hush thing that puts a, a, a big wedge between some, my own son. Okay, this is why this sort of stuff should not happen because this is a part of who we are. You know what I mean? And I'm, you know, I can't have that conversation with them. See, this to me was nothing but wicked. Now, I, I know that the reason why my father wanted to um, have me cloned, apparently, like I said, my father on his own would not have the ability to clone somebody. Okay, I would say my dad was a guy who tinkered a lot in the garage, okay? He tinkered a lot. I know every time he made a little computer back in the, let's say, late 70s, early 80s. It wasn't anything like, you know, what you'd see, like, with, with, with like, maybe Steve Jobs would create or something. But to me, it was like, that's pretty cool, right? I never thought that my dad would, he obviously didn't have the ability to clone me on his own. There were people that were working with him. So, obviously, based on what I'm reading, my intuitive readings, my father had me cloned because I was his soulmate. I was his, um, his wife in Egypt. 
And then apparently, I know it sounds crazy. I'm aware of what it sounds like, okay, which obviously tells you that I'm not cuckoo. Okay, I'm a completely sane person. I just feel so weird talking about it because it's so out of the norm, even for me, an occultist, right? <laughs> but anyway, my father um, wanted me cloned because of the relationship that we had. It was probably very personal, you know, me, because he just wanted to be around someone that he really clicked with fully understand even though there would be a huge age difference and the relationship model would have to be different he still wanted me with him and I think that's beautiful right um, now apparently I get the intuitive reading that I was an occultist in England which I think is so badass like that's so cool it makes sense that I was an occultist back then and it makes sense that I don't believe that I wanted to be in England I mean, based on the story that I've read, <clears throat> you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of inaccurate things that are written in stories. People don't tell things exactly the way they happen. But from what I can see, and it, based on how I am now, I would not have wanted to be in that situation. I'm the kind of person, home is my spot. What's familiar to me is where I need to be. So <clears throat> based on how I am now, I, and I know that I would not have wanted to be away from my home, okay? So, he was living in a foreign country with people that he did not know, people he could not relate to. Apparently, him and there must have been some sort of relationship with the Howlands when I, when I was in England. It sounds so weird bouncing back and forth between the prince referring to the prince and me, so I, it gets kind of weird. But anyway, I do believe that there was some sort of interaction that he had with the Howlands while he was in um, England. And I do believe that perhaps maybe my father may have been alive at that time in another form, perhaps even in the form of a girl. I don't know if he was a guy or whatever. I don't know. Also, apparently the intuitive reading I get is that the prince was gay. I was gay in a past life. I believe that I was only gay so that I could be with my soulmate. So I started off as a girl being married to, <laughs> I, it's so weird when I say Tut because it's like everybody knows who Tut is. He's a famous character. He's not even a character, he's an actual person, okay? It just sounds so far-fetched, okay? I know it sounds whacked out, but this is the way it is. So we were together then and we were together in between many lives between me being the Prince Alamehu and me being his wife through that through those those lifespans we were together several times and most of the time I'm sure we were probably you know he was male I was female and then sometimes maybe I would be reincarnation I guess the more times you reincarnate there's more lessons you have to learn and sometimes learning those lessons can only be learned as being another member of the opposite sex that's possible. I mean, there's, there, there, there's got to be some reason why people flip back and forth. Just like, you know, I, I recently saw a video on um, Facebook about the little boy who was, who uh, I, I mentioned the guy, little boy who said that he was the screenplay writer for Gone with the Wind. And there was an, also, there was another kid who, who was a white boy who was black, a black woman in his past life, okay? There's reasons for what what happens in those higher realms and who actually has control over that, whatever. Anyway, um, my, my father's reasons for bringing me back was most likely for his own relationship, personal fulfillment, okay? Um, and and it's and the relationship that I had with my father, it's important for you and everyone to understand that my relationship with my father was exactly that it was a father daughter relationship there was no, no incest involved in it there was never any sort of inappropriate touching on my father's part or anything like that it was like i believe that my father must have always loved me so much that it was something that was beyond that which is good because i need to have that respect for my father right um so now I know that there's a lot of people who obviously knew 
there's a lot of things going on in my community as well as my old community, which is Lancaster, which I am considering moving back to Lancaster if I can have the ability to do so. I Right now, I just have this wanderlust, like I do want to travel and stuff like that, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so, um, you know, I know that I was targeted because of, um, they, they say the excuse was that it was based on religion. I believe it was more based on race than anything else um, because, uh, you know, growing up, m my whole focus was to understand um, the concepts and ideas of God, right? Um, I have mentioned before in my videos of this, before I even knew I was reincarnated, um, I, I mentioned that I would um, watch things like TVN and I uh, studied with Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses may not be like what made me like a born again Christian, but they are still within the Christian denominations. Okay, so I started off with my roots in Christianity sincerely. Okay, I did study with Jehovah's Witnesses. So it could not, nobody could say that I was ever Antichrist or anything like that, but um, they must have gotten tired of, you know, because white people, if they're racist, they can just get a wild hair up their ass and feel completely comfortable with invoking their racist bullshit on somebody. And this is exactly what they did. Um, like I said, my father did not create me on his own. He would not have the ability to do that. So the people who, who you know, probably suggested that or whatever, um, the whole program, whatever, um, ended up being racist people, you know. And I did mention the connection with the, jo the Joseph Mandele and everything. And the people who would associate with someone like that, obviously, uh, condone that sort of ideology, right? So I was dealing with uh, very abusive people, sick psych psychopath, basically. And so, um, you know, I've suffered a lot through that. My father's reasons for bringing me here was not to bring me in to be some sort of antichrist. And I resent that. Like I, a few days ago, I almost had like an anxiety attack because that word antichrist scares me so much. Not because um, I get like pictures of my of Damien conjured up in my mind, which it, which is kind of funny because that's that would be their interpretation of an antichrist, somebody who's just wicked, just like you talk about Jesus and they start like frothing out the mouth and like their their eyes get all crossed and stuff. That's not it. It's the fact that somebody can throw that label something that heavy on a person and use that to target another individual and set this person out to be a target for hatred. Okay? That's a heavy, heavy thing to throw on anybody. That's like, you know, saying, pointing out a person and when, and in actuality, these are the people who are Antichrist. Everything that Jesus represents. Now, I understand people take People manipulate things into what they want it to be, okay? I can honestly tell you that my studies of the Bible, even though I may not be in the Christian faith, my studies of the Bible has always given me a great respect for Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I have always used Jesus as an example for somebody who is seeking a spiritual um, existence. I have never, ever, said anything negative about Jesus Christ. No, we're not. Now, there's been people who've debated whether Jesus Christ exists or has existed or not. And I, my feeling about that is whether he existed or not, okay, is not so much important. The fact is, is that what he represents and the, um, the behavior of a person like that, what they have to give to humanity is really important and great and the and the and should be the main focus you know um so i respect jesus you know and just like you know i i, I it, it's like basically these wicked people who 
to me are nothing but demonic were calling me demonic and I was suffering the consequences for it because in reality they wanted to call me the Antichrist because these people are actually racist and they don't want to make it a race issue even though it starts becoming more and more obvious as we went through this whole thing so um that's what it was and so I I I got you know really pissed off about the entire thing thinking about how long I've suffered through this now yesterday I was mad I was gonna I tried to make a video and it, it flopped because I was recording on my phone and then my phone cut off and I was gonna just re-delete it anyway because there were certain things I was starting to talk about that I don't wish to talk about and um, that that's what leads me to this talk talk go back to the issue of releasing um, making this story um, releasing the story to the public like and what I mean by the public obviously a YouTube video is public I know that my my channel is screened and I'm kind of in a bubble through this little collective group that has attached itself to me um, and that it would be including celebrities I do believe that I have millions of subscribers on YouTube I know they play with the numbers a lot of people who seem a little edgy um, maybe not I don't like to use the word edgy because I don't believe in controversy I believe that you know as long as you're being peaceful um, you can pretty much say whatever you want <laughs> you know uh, <clears throat> but there are some people like in this group especially because they were making it a religious issue they want to try to censor me or whatever like that so they try to do things to de demoralize me whatever but um, anyway going back to that um, yeah, every little thing that I talk about just leads to one other conversation that's why when I write out it's important for me to write scripts and follow those scripts and everything that I make like for example on patreon is based on script I don't like to deviate because I can start taking one thing to another that's just how it is okay that's conversation okay but anyway I'm a good conversationalist you know that's why I, I wish I had you know people that I could trust to be around so I can have a conversation but anyway um where was I ha! um going back to making this a public issue yes YouTube is public okay but what, what I think what people want is like for it to be on like main news channels this is like what I'm getting and the thing is I don't I know that this is a hush hush operation or was meant to be it was like it was it was meant to it, it's like okay it's meant to be an open operation but the people who were in power of it had I would I'm gonna say wicked intent okay maybe people on the I, I, I kind of demonstrated this in one of my other videos um the gang stalking video I made a few years ago um, where there's like a little pyramid on top and there's like this group of people who you know they 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 know what what's up they know why they're doing it like they knew good and well this was about racism but they figured you know what we don't want to be like we don't want to just come right out and say we're Nazi like people we don't want to come out and say this shit so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of make it a religious thing and you know people want to be in, they want to be included you know so they're gonna be like oh you know yeah we'll jump on and, but they deep down inside had their own racist issues so they they encourage this hatred and it goes down the pyramid right all the way down to like the bottom scale to the general public so you know there's certain things that I don't feel comfortable talking about in I would not feel comfortable talking about like I don't have an issue talking about me knowing that I was friends with Alan Leahu I do think it's important to talk about the nature versus nurture um, um, experiment I personally if I was to be interviewed I would prefer the person to come up with questions for me to answer but I would I would really like to avoid certain questions you know like specific I don't want to name specific individuals I don't want it I don't want to do that you know what I mean um I 
I always, in, in an argument, and this argument, I'm going to tell you, was all one-sided. These Nazi fucktards are the ones who came after me. Okay? Just like they killed my father. I'm going to say this again. Yes, they killed my father. They were coming after me. Okay? And I don't want to name the names. I just want to get on with my life. The issue is, is I am Prince Alamalehu. And the issue is, is that I knew people who knew that I was Prince Alamalehu who um, resented me for it. They didn't want to come out. The thing is, they resented me because I am a person of color who has superior traits. And that was bothering them. But mind you, I didn't ask to, I didn't ask to be born. <laughs> I didn't ask to be born. I didn't ask to be a part of this. And I don't think that I go around showing off. But for somebody who hates you, you just showing up at a grocery store is enough to fucking piss them off. And this is what it was with these people who were on the higher level of the pyramid. And they were pissed off at me for existing, for breathing, for taking up space. And they were, and everything that they did showed it. There was no reason for the bullshit that I had to put up with. Okay, so this is all their fault but I'm the kind of person when I'm dealing with any sort of um, argument okay or some some sort of confrontation I always do my best to make sure that nobody can say that I contributed into it in any way so by I feel as though by me saying or mentioning certain people that I have no respect for is only going to make them want to hurt me even more you know what I mean and I, I it's because this is a public issue everybody knows what happened everybody knows who's involved so that would be dumb for them to do especially since everybody fucking knows at this point but it's just the fact that you know I don't ever want to say well I, I had a hand this argument by the way I don't I, I, I will never take responsibility for any of it from anything that these wicked people did. Wicked, wicked is the word. But anyway, so yeah, I am, I would think it would be very ther therapeutic for me um, as well as other people who've been around me and know me to have it out in the open. It just makes better, it just makes sense. But I think the best part of, of it being out in the open is the fact that it gives people hope you know, reincarnation, um, or just, it, it gives people, um, yeah, a spiritual hope, whether it be about reincarnation or, or even people who, I do believe that some people do get just whoop up to heaven. Like, you know, even the Bible talks about this one particular individual. I can't think of the name, but basically it just said that, that God took him like it, the whole body and everything just off the earth you know I do believe that there's there's a we we should think more about the other side of life because it is important it's important on how we live our lives you know there's a spiritual message that's very beautiful in this story even though <laughs> even though there was a lot of shit that had to um I had to deal with which made me think more about how more and more it confirms my belief that I do believe that earth is hell. I really do. I believe that our existence here on earth plays a huge part and how we deal with being in hell plays a huge part on how we um, move forward in our spiritual lives in our, and how we evolve for the next life or whatever if we choose to come back or um, if we if we gain enough knowledge that we don't have to come back. Whatever, however that completely works. You know, I'm not all knowing, you know. Um, it's just, um, it's just, I think it's, that's the main message. But it would also help clear out um, the animosity and the tension and the um, ugly wickedness that got spread throughout like for example my household like I said you know I I have a son that I can't share this with 
I, I, I can't talk to him about it. That's, that's psychologically damaging for a lot of the things that I went through that I, you know, people can literally watch a person um, in household implode in on themselves and they know what could help that person because they know about the situation, but they can't talk about it. Just like my mom, like I, I think there was a part of me. I remember when I was, when I walked before I walked out the door and saw her the last time I saw her, um, I could tell she was, she was standing out by the, by the, um, the sink, like she always did. And she was pretending to look out the window. This is something she always did, right? When she felt guilty. And I could tell she felt guilty. Like, but nobody gave a shit about what was going on with me. Nobody gave a shit about how I felt about the situation. You know what I mean? It's not that I don't believe that my son cares about how I feel. Because I know that he does. But I understand how this shit works. And I, and I'm, and it's wrong. It's wrong. So I would prefer it to be out in the open. Instead of, you know, making videos about it. Using YouTube. And it, I would never try to put this or, or make this a, 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 an issue that my son would feel like he needs to solve or anything. I've never laid anything. When I was a single parent raising my son, and I went through hell in the workplace, and I'd come home severely depressed all the time, I never once laid that guilt trip on him. Like, oh, I have to fucking deal with this. And blah, blah. I never did that. Never. You know what I mean? And I would never lay this on him. But I think it's important for him to know, hey, you know what? We're from Ethiopia. We have Egyptian blood in us. That's important to know. You know what I mean? That's the tragic part about people who, who are adopted. Like, there's some people who are adopted who don't know who their biological parents are. It's like, it's who you are. You know, it's a part of who, what makes you, you. You know, and, and like, well, I can't really have this conversation. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's like, and then I, now that he's older, you know, it's like, I can, I, I, I can talk a little bit more about, you know, being mobbed in the workplace and stuff like that. But I, I wouldn't, I never mentioned that to him when he was little, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've always tried my best to be a responsible person and, and tried to give my son the best life I possibly could, even though I dealt with nothing but stress the entire time because of these people who I fucking hate with all my heart. But anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, I think it would be better to get it out in the open. And so, you know, I know that people watch my videos I would prefer if you contacted the news or whatever, but I don't want people coming to my house and I don't want to be um, bombarded like uh, out in the open. I would prefer like being contacted by email to have an interview if this is what people want to happen. But I would like to get it done as soon as possible. Why? Because I just want to move on. I want my life. I want to move on from um, the always wondering what's going to happen. Why? Why is this happening? Why? Blah, blah, blah. I, I hate it. 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 I hated it. Before I even knew who I was, I hate, I've i never liked it. I hate covert shit because covert shit is wicked shit. If it's not out in the open, if it's something you can't say in front of my face, it's wicked. So just get it out in the open. Anyway, um, that's that was my intuitive message that, you know, my father um, wanted to have me back because I was a person that, you know, he wanted to spend time with. And um, that whole issue about me being the Antichrist was um, demonic as fuck. Anyway, there was another intuitive message that I had um, that, yeah, I'm, I'm generally Saturday's online activity discussion. <laughs> People talk about me a lot, you know. Um, now I know why they were talking about me. I, I know that there was, um, like originally before I found out the cloning thing, I, I don't know if, um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's weird, like, finding out what getting down to the root of it all, you know, and knowing that, um, 
that I'm one of those people that I read about. Like I, I remember reading about stuff like this um, in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I understood that this stuff happened, even though, you know, nobody talks, of, nobody has confirmed like that we actually have clones. Okay. Nobody has, you don't hear, I've never heard it on the news. I, anything like that. We hear these things as based on conspiracy theories. They'll say this particular actress is a clone or this particular singer is a clone or whatever. They'll say stuff like that, right? Within these certain like social groups who, who are what they call woke or whatever. They'll talk about these sort of things. So, you know, I understood that. And did I believe that some of these celebrities were clones? I kept thinking, yeah, there's, there's definitely that possibility. So that, none of that like phased me, but to find out that I myself am one of these clones, it, it, it really, it, it throws me off. It, it blew, blew me away, mainly because um, that I could have, I could be in a family that was just being like fake the entire time. Like that, 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 I think that part that, that really blows me away. That's the part that really, um, I would like to add in this na nurture, nature versus nurture, um, experiment notes. I don't know if I'm talking to these former Nazi people or not, but you know, um, they're destructive. Their nature is destructive anyway. Okay. Everything that these things people do, every thought that they have, every idea that comes inside their head is wicked. Okay. So, um, the fact that, you know, a part of the program is having somebody in, you know, being raised in um, a household with people and pretending that the pretending part is, I think, what affects a person the most psychologically. Finding out, you know, I don't know um, if that was a part of the program is to keep it secret the entire life of that person. I don't know, you know, but everything, like I said, everything, if they if they were going to conduct this experiment again one day, which they probably will, I, I think that cloning is something that's going to stay. I, I, I do believe that cloning is something that's going to stay. Um, if they're going to do it, they, it, it's hard to like, you know, recommend a better or healthier way to people that are sick and twisted because they don't really care about the emotional well-being of a person. Obviously, I mean, I, I've read about Joseph Mengele and he's pretty fucked. You know what I mean? So these people have the same mentality. So, but I will say that 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 is, if I was, if I, let's just say for example, I had the ability to conduct an experiment like that. Um, I wouldn't do it that way, you know, unless of course you want to see people suffer, but, but and these people do, they, they don't give a fuck. But if I, if I was to try to see how could you put a person in an environment and give them like the emotional nourishment and that sort of thing, I would try to raise, make, try to raise a person to the best highest standard that I possibly could. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't understand their objective. I think their objective was to just have you destroyed possibly, you know, they're very sick anyway. Um, and then also my other intuitive message was, um, that the prince was known as an occultist in England, which I've already had that intuitive message before. It makes total sense. You know, I've always had an, a knack for it and interest in it. Um, since knowing what God was when I was as Maria Gordon, knowing or, or understanding what God was. Um, to me, all of those weird mysteries just went hand in hand. Mysticism is a huge part of, of my connection to God. And it always has been. And I think, you know, it was silly to think when the prince was living in England that it's, it's, it's not right to expect somebody who sees things differently um, to assimilate in a culture that, that's that different. And don't get me wrong, like, um, I love 
English. I, I like English a lot, a lot of English things, okay? Like, obviously, I, I love a lot of English bands. I grew up listening to, like, people like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and stuff like that. So I pretty much worship British men, okay? They're the shit, seriously. But, and um, I like English fashion, like I mentioned um <laughs> Seeing my little son, I, I wanted to see my son in those little short pants and the knee socks. I think that's so cute. You know what's so cute about it is like, because their legs when they're little are so stubby. And then you have like this little you know, little pair of shorts and then the these like long knee socks and their little chubby knees just kind of hang out. And it looks so cute. <laughs> that is the cutest thing, you know, and I, I like a lot of the the hats and stuff that they wear over there. And I, I remember thinking Boy George was like the shit, you know, when I was growing up. I like their, their the creative nature of that. But, you know, you can't expect people to assimilate everything into their life, you know. Spirituality is, to me, a very personal thing, you know. So, anyway. Also, the other message I got that um, I know that many clones never wake up, but I woke up. I, I'm very... Um, aware and um, and because I'm psychic you know and then you know um, how I found out that I was Prince Alamalay who to me it still trips me out you know because I remember um, reflecting on what my brother said about me being adopted and I didn't realize that I never thought that I was and then when I I started meditating I'm like well then who am I that picture uh, I never seen that that boy before in my life, Prince Alamale, who was unknown to me forever. I, I don't recall my parents ever mentioning him. Um, I don't recall reading about him before. Um, I know a little bit, things about, about Egypt and um, Ethiopia, just little bits and pieces based on what I've read in history. And then I remember reading a lot about, because I read about things like spirituality, of course I read about those sort of things, but like certain people, I don't know a lot about that. So I never heard about Prince Alan Elihu, ever. So the first time I heard about him was in the month of May or June, somewhere around there where I saw that article about um, the prince going home. And then when I asked the question like, well, then who was I in a past life? That picture, I remembered that article. And then I started doing more meditation and I got confirmation on that. And I'm like, oh my God, weird, very weird, <laughs> very weird. But anyway, um, also the other message that I got was that the celebrities are happy that I connected to them with them on Instagram. I, I don't know why, but I get intuitive messages on who I'm supposed to contact or, or connect with. I haven't really done any active connecting or anything like that, but, um, obviously some of these people, do watch me and are aware of who I am. And, um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a stalkerish type person. I don't like to make people feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want people to think or feel like they, they need to talk to me or anything like that, but I'm just aware of who you are. Also, um, what else did I want to say? Um, I think that's pretty much it, you know, um, I, I would be willing to have the issue out and, and open. I just don't want to, I don't want to set off these fucking demons. I really don't, you know, I, what I want to do is I just want to go on with my life. You know, I do want the issue with Patreon to resolve itself relatively quick. I do know that I have people who are, who are paying for my videos. And I know that they don't want to be recognized on Patreon. Okay. Um, maybe they, I don't know what people fear me getting their email from. I mean, like, I'm not, I, what are they afraid of? I, I don't know what you're afraid of. I'm not going to hurt you. But, um, or even, like, communicate with anyone, you know. It, I don't know anyone. I, I don't like to, like, um, I'm not the kind of person that, like, just, goes out and like communicates with people randomly you know what i mean i'm, I'm not trying to make <clears throat> people oh my, my voice is getting weird 
I don't want to try to make people feel uncomfortable, but I do understand the reason um, why or maybe their their level of discomfort. The only thing that I was upset about last night is that I do feel as though I'm getting kind of shorted a little bit by that because, you know, I do want to see my life make improvements. I do want to move away from um, the negative thing that happened to me. And when I'm dealing with just one more issue, it's, it's a residual issue from the main issue. And a lot of things trigger me at this point. A lot of things trigger me um, from being targeted. A lot of things trigger me because it makes me think about this, 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 and this. And now at this point, the ultimate trigger always leads back to Joseph Mengele, which tells me that this whole thing started off on something sick and twisted it's even worse than it was before okay so you have to understand that i'm getting very triggered by a lot of things at this point and until i see things moving smoothly i'm not going to be that way and this is another issue unfortunately this is another issue knowing that when i check out my patreon account that my account is not running up and running the way it really should be the way I have it has every I have every right to have it um, running, and the reason why is because of this 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 everything, you know, leads back to the same thing at this point. So, please forgive me. I'm just if you understood what it was like to be targeted, and then finding out not just you being targeted, but you know reasons why and how twisted it really is, then you'd understand why I can someone like me can be so emotionally fragile um when it comes to that sort of stuff you know what I mean but anyway um I'm gonna wrap this video up um you know if if someone is watching who wants to con I, I will not contact the news myself why because um I would feel uncomfortable doing that I'm doing it I'm saying this because I'm getting the intuitive messages that people are are excited and talking about it. So if that's what you guys want to do, do so. But please don't let this drag on. If you want to do it, let's get it done like within the next week or two because I really want to move on from this. Okay. I, I'm I'm I hate it. I hate what these people have done. I hate who these people are and I hate the fact that I've suffered for such a very long time. I do however appreciate and adore my soul tribe and um, they're very special to me because I have a lot of positive memories of listening to these people or watching these people when I was younger. They probably added and gave me provided a lot of comfort in my little life while I was lonely and didn't have any friends snuggling up to my bogart the bass <laughs> anyway i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video i hope you all have a good day take care bye, -bye.